to my epoch tutorial series where I show you how to set up and modify your own DAISY epoch server. This video is the long awaited mission system video that I've been promising you guys but haven't had the time to actually do. Now I want to actually begin by stating that this script is not written by me. It was written by Mark311 over at the epoch forums. Now the script has been heavily edited by a friend of mine whose video I'm actually going to link at the end of this. That video shows you how to install a very customized version of Epoch where a lot of mods have been integrated into it already for you. And that includes this system and some of the other ones I've already shown. I've also done a couple of edits on this to make it work standalone without having to have that full pack. This video consists of two separate parts. The first will be the install, which is simple and easy. The second will be how to customize the script to your liking. As always, this script is ready to go. You don't have to do any customization, but if there are some aspects you don't like about it or that you want to change to your specifications, I'll show you how to do all of that. So go ahead and begin by downloading the zip file on the GitHub here. As always, the link for this will be in the description. And go ahead and move it over to your desktop and extract it so that we can work directly from your desktop without you having to search for any files. I'm going to delete the zip file because I no longer need that. Now navigate to your epoch server folder find your epoch server pbo it's located in the at daisy epoch server and in the add-ons folder you can see that the pbo is here and what you'll have to do is extract this you can use whatever pbo extractor that you like but i use pbo manager the link for that will be in the description if you don't have a pbo extractor if you download and install this one you can right click it, go to PBO Manager, and extract to DAISY Server. That will create a folder that we can actually work in. Now open up the new folder that was created and then open up the files that we downloaded. Again open the Wicked AI Missions Master folder and you'll see that there's a WAI folder here. Move that folder into the PBO folder that we had created. So now you'll have WAI in this folder as well. After the transfer is complete, go into the system folder right here and open servermonitor.sqf. I'm going to open this with Notepad++ because it's my preferred editor. If you would like a different one, you can use that as well. I highly suggest this one though, it makes it really easy. And I will go ahead and put a link for this in the description as well. And what you'll need to do is look back at the GitHub page that we have here at number 5. You'll see that we've already gone into the system folder and opened server monitor SQF. We have to find this code here. This code exists at the very bottom of this server monitor SQF. If you go down, you'll see that it's almost the last line. And we need to paste this code above it. So go ahead and right click, copy that code, and go ahead and paste it right above the allow connection. When that's finished, you can save it, close your editor, and go back to your DAISY add-ons folder where you have your server PBO. Our install is actually finished. All we have to do is repack the PBO. Now when you repack a PBO, make sure that you keep the old one just in case any of your edits were incorrect and caused the server to not run. So what I'm going to do right now and what you should do is rename the PBO that's already there. I'm going to add backup at the end of it. If you have another backup already, you can add a number to it. Backup 2, backup 3, 
just make sure that you always back it up in case anything happens and you need to revert back to it. So I've renamed it and now I'm going to repack this folder into a PBO. So I'm going to right click this, come down to where it says PBO Manager and pack into DAISY PBO. Depending on which type of PBO editor you use, yours may be a little different. But as you can see, we've now created the DAISY server PBO. The install is complete. If you don't plan on editing anything, go ahead and delete the DAISY server here. Just the folder, not the PBO. So go ahead and delete the folder if you're ready to go right now without any edits. But if you plan on doing any of the edits, first test your server. Run the server and join it and see if you can join. If you can, that means that you haven't really messed anything up too bad and it's working, at least to a decent extent. You want to do this to make sure that any of your edits that are going to happen next aren't the cause for the break. If the server is broken now, you didn't cause it through the edits. Now, after doing these edits, if the server doesn't work, you know something you did had caused the problem. So once you're satisfied that the server is working, we can go ahead and begin editing these files. To edit the files, you'll go back into your DAISY server folder and open WAI. In here, you'll be able to change anything you need. Right at the beginning, you can see there's an AI config. Opening this, you can find that this is actually where you'll do any of the AI editing for the server. From here, we can customize the AI for difficulty and some other changes such as this. This file is really well documented and doesn't really need much input from me. These comments here will tell you what the variable and number does. You can see down here that there's a custom array for the skill levels that you can change to your liking. Change the AI gear loadout for the different units. So pretty much anything you need to do to the AI itself is in here, including the weapon changing. It's all well documented, so I'll go ahead and just leave you to that. Now if you go back into the WAI folder, you can look at a couple other files. There's a custom spawns file where you can set specific places for certain things to spawn. This isn't really needed. It's completely disabled at the moment. If you want to enable anything, you can just remove the slash star and star slash. And it will begin spawning at the specified position here. If you're using this solely for missions, there's no need for any of this stuff. If you want to have a little extra thing, you can play around with this and learn about it more. But for the purpose of this being mainly a missions video, I'm not going to cover that very much. And now what we'll do is we'll go into the missions folder here. Here we can change the event spawned and what spawns at them, all that different stuff. If you open the missions config file here, this one's pretty decently documented as well, but I'm going to go over a little bit of the key information that's needed. The first two here deal with the mission timers. These are in seconds. This is a time between missions, and this is the length that each mission will run. So if you want to change these, you'll just figure out how long you want it to be and then convert that into seconds and change it there. This here is which mission spawn. If you want to stop a mission from spawning, you simply delete it from the list like that. And if you want it to be a little more frequent, you add it in again. So we have an MV-22 mission. So let's say that we want that to run a little more frequently. You'll copy and paste it there. So now there's two. It doesn't matter where you put this in the array. No matter where it goes, it's still going to have the same chance of spawning. So before there was only a 1 in 9 chance of the MV-22 spawning, now there's a 2 in 10 chance because we've added another one. 
As you can see, there's already two building supplies because the building supplies one is a really popular one and we wanted that to spawn a little more often. Now, for us, we set the building supplies one to be quite difficult. There's typically a lot of AI there. And down here, you can see that there's a fuel number. This number dictates how much fuel is in the vehicles at the missions. If you want it to have fuel, you can change this number. I really suggest just leaving it at zero because that requires someone to either come with something to tow or lift the vehicle, have the required fuel with them, or to go get fuel for it. It makes it a little more difficult so that they can't just load everything from the boxes into the vehicle and leave. And these different arrays below are the different types of spawnable vehicles. You can see that we have armed, armed chopper, aircraft, all kinds of different stuff. So you can go through these and add or remove ones that you want. This is the number of guns that will spawn in any type of ammo box. You can manipulate this to whatever you want. These are the guns capable of spawning into the ammo box. These are the number of tools that can spawn in ammo boxes and obviously the tools that can be put in there and the number of items that will spawn in the ammo box and what items can spawn in there. That is pretty much it for the missions config. Now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and edit the missions themselves. To do this you go into the missions folder here and you'll choose which one you want to edit. So let's say we're going to edit the building supplies. You can see that there's not very much documentation in this, but there's only a little bit you need to know about this. In here, you can edit the number of AI that spawn. To do that, you'll see that there's actually a couple of different groups. There's this group, this group, and this group as well. Each of these groups has their own number of AI. And to change the first group, you'll have to change the random number set here. Really all you need to do is change this plus number. So if you want less to spawn, we'll just say plus zero. Or we can do plus two. Any number will work here, even if you wanted 99 to spawn. Now of course that's a random. It's a random of three plus the number here. And down here, the number of units, it's a static 4. You can change this to whatever you want. If you want there to be 20 in this unit, you can do that. And again, the same for the next. There may be more or less of these units. Just remember that this bracket set here, from this one to this one, is one unit. This one to this one is another. And obviously the same for the above. Now what if you don't want anything to spawn at this specific mission? What you do is, right above this random number, you'll put a slash and a star. And below the very last one, you'll put a star and then a slash. As you can see, this area is now grayed out. I'm going to go ahead and make a couple of spaces between each so that you can clearly see it. So remember, it's a slash star at the top and a star slash at the bottom. That makes this entire code here not execute, so this code won't be used. Make sure that you incorporate all of the different unit groups. For this mission, there's only three. For others, there may only be two or one. Just make sure it goes below the last call spawn group and above the random number here. And that will remove all of the AI for this mission only. Obviously, if you want to do it for another mission, we can just randomly choose one. Let's do the military chopper. Again, if you want to remove all the AI, slash star, and then we'll look for the last, last uh, spawn group. And that's right here. And we'll do a star slash. As you can see, this one has three as well, but they're a little different. This here is a random number group. This second one here is a static number of four group. 
And this very last one here, there's an M2 machine gun. You can add this to any of the different files by just copying this whole thing and then pasting it into it. So let's add one to building. We'll go below the call spawn group and just add the machine gun. It's as simple as that. You can also completely delete it. It's all up to you. But I suggest commenting it out in case you want to go back and edit it and add it back in. But some missions have a machine gun, some don't. The reason why we don't have a machine gun at the building supplies is simply because the machine gun can blow up boxes and vehicles. So if a player was hiding behind the boxes, the machine gun would blow it up and you would lose all contents inside of it. Now the missions portion is over. Now this mission system does actually allow for roaming AI. However, the roaming AI for this is kind of stupid, so it's completely disabled right now. If you want to take the time to go through and enable it, you can do that. It's not really too hard, but I'm not going to cover it because the AI for this just isn't very good. It's great for missions, but it's not good for walking around. What the roaming AI does is it'll get vehicles or ground units and walk around the map looking for players to attack. If you want something like that, I highly suggest you go and get Sarge's AI instead. If you want to watch some more, you can just go to my channel. I have a good decent amount of these tutorials up for different mods that a lot of people like. If you want to wait around for some more of mine, I don't get them up consistently, but I get, to, I get them up as much as I possibly can. And so go ahead and subscribe if you want to wait around for those. And like I said before, this actual system was created by Mark311 and had a lot of heavy edits by a buddy of mine known as Grave. A link to his channel will be in the description and I will actually go ahead and show you what his work is. He has created a full epoch server with a lot of mods added into it. And there's a full system on how to install it. He's got a tutorial on his YouTube channel on how to install it properly. And it has most of the stuff that I've covered on my channel in this already, and a lot of other stuff. This is a pack that you can't really remove stuff from too easily, but it's really well integrated and it all works properly. It has auto restarts of the server, it's got the admin tools, it's got tow and lift. A lot of good stuff. Actually, if you look down here, you can see that there's some credits. Um, my admin tools, evac chopper, radio communications, there's the tow and lift by the Armaholic people. So if you want a server that's fully configured with all of this stuff here, you can go over watch his and actually install that whole thing without having to do in each individual mod. However, if you don't want some of these, you can just keep watching my channel. I'm doing most of the tutorials on how to install each of these individually. But he does some really good work on this and it works perfectly. We actually use this for our server. Take a look at his work. He's actually got a lot of gaming videos on his channel too. So if you feel like watching those, stop by and watch that as well. A link to the video for this install on the Epoch build here can be found at the end of this video right below. You should see it now. And as always, thanks for watching, and keep a lookout for more of my tutorials.